Holding a 3 degree glide slope at 250 feet per second, this aircraft receives a sudden command to 9 degrees while holding airspeed. The automatic landing control system simultaneously coordinates thrust and elevator effects to achieve the commands. In this lesson, we develop and demonstrate this automatic glide slope control. During landing, a radio transmitter commands the desired glide slope. For example, three degrees from the horizontal. Instruments in the aircraft nose receive this guidance, and the objective is to make the aircraft follow the glide path at a desired airspeed. That is, we want the aircraft velocity vector to align with the glide path while holding a specific magnitude. But as the aircraft pitches to follow the glide path, it simultaneously creates a change in airspeed, which will not correspond to the desired airspeed. Thus, the control system must address the coupling between airspeed and pitch dynamics. This is accomplished with two separate control loops, velocity magnitude control and glide slope control that includes velocity direction. In this lesson, we develop the airspeed and glide slope controllers in detail. This will create numerous control loops which will be tuned and analyzed systematically we then simulate the full tuned glide slope control system. Let's first focus on the glide slope loop, starting with the glide slope error definition. Start with the ground and the commanded glide slope angle. Here's the aircraft not on the glide slope with some error D, a distance normal to the glide slope. Let the glide slope error be the commanded slope minus the glide slope. The range from the ground is R. From this error, our glide slope control objective is to regulate D, or to drive the glide slope error to zero. The main components in this control loop include something called a glide slope coupler, we have the closed loop aircraft response and a glide slope measurement system. Let's first focus on the coupler. The glide slope coupler is a user specified architecture. Here, a simple PI controller. It relates the glide slope air to the commanded pitch angle. The coupler outputs the command to the closed loop aircraft. Breaking out the coupler block diagram, we think about the need to simulate in the time domain. And so from this, we desire an ODE system for this PI controller. Some quick algebra. Now taking the inverse Laplace transform, we readily produce that time domain PI controller with pitch angle command output and the integral error of glide slope as the state. We now look at the glide slope measurement. We derive a relationship between the aircraft state and the glide slope angle achieved. Start with a desired glide path. The aircraft is off by some distance D on a different glide slope with a flight path angle of gamma. We seek the dynamics of the distance D. To get there, here's a triangle. And with some trig, we can find this angle as the commanded glide path plus the flight path angle. Note, with VT as the hypotenuse, we now have a similar triangle with a desired glide path. So that D dot is simply VT times the sine of chi command plus gamma. To linearize, a small angle approximation with the trimmed airspeed produces the formula. Laplace gives us that relationship then between D and the flight path angle. In block diagram form, 
the commanded glide slope input, the achieved flight path angle, times trimmed airspeed over S gives D. Now we want a relationship between D and the achieved glide slope. We already established the glide slope error. Note that D is range times the sine of glide slope error. Another small angle approximation gives error as D over R. With this simple formula, we can relate D to glide slope. Multiply D by minus 1 over R to get minus E where error is glide slope command minus achieved. We add in glide slope command at a junction with minus E to get glide slope achieved. Now we have the model relating the aircraft state, specifically flight path angle, the commanded glide slope angle, and the output, the achieved glide slope angle. In our block diagram, we can bring in this detail. But also remember, we like time domain models for simulation. Here's what we've done in the frequency domain. Immediately with a Laplace transform, we have the time domain linear models. And here's the nonlinear ODEs, which we're using formulas we've already determined. These will ultimately go into the full nonlinear longitudinal simulation. Last is a closed loop pitch controlled aircraft. We've covered this pitch controller before in section 1.6.2. It's the displacement control with artificial damping and lead compensation at the command input where the pitch rate and pitch angle are fed back and the output is flight path angle achieved. This system can be directly inserted into the glide slope loop. And we won't forget our LTI form where we note the consistency between input and output. Squeezing this into the block diagram, this is the glide slope control loop. Again, comprised of the coupler or controller the closed loop aircraft dynamics, and the glide slope measurement. In the time domain, the glide slope coupler receiving the glide slope angle command input. The pitch angle command output goes to the closed loop pitch control system, which affects the aircraft dynamics producing a change in flight path angle that's input into the glide slope model along with the commanded glide slope angle to produce the achieved glide slope angle. This completes our development of the glide slope tracking control system architecture and associated models. Let's look at the airspeed loop. We've covered this architecture before and its tuning in section 1.6.3. We present it here as a review and for completeness. First, the PI controller on the left it operates on the airspeed air signal, producing a throttle command output. The throttle is modeled as a first order system with time constant tau t. It produces an output achieved throttle. The lead compensator receives the achieved throttle output and advances the throttle command to correct for the slow engine response. Since we are working, with a single input, single output block, we note that the processes inside the loop commute and their order can be changed. Thus, the lead compensator, which would be part of the flight control software, could be grouped with the PI controller as part of the airspeed controller software. Moving on, the engine is also a first order model with time constant tau e. And in this exercise, we assume that the engine has a slow response, which requires the lead compensator. The effect of the compensator on performance and robustness was shown in section 1.6.3. This is the airspeed loop now in the time domain with LTI systems. 
connected as part of a feedback process for airspeed control. This control architecture has several loops with multiple tuning knobs. We need a systematic approach to tune this multi-loop system, and we work from the inside out. For the glide slope, we first decouple the airspeed dynamics from the plant model. We assume the separate airspeed controller will address this coupling. Focusing on the short period and pitch angle dynamics allows us to directly address glide slope angle and control objectives, starting with the innermost angular rate loop to add damping, then going to the pitch rate loop to add tracking performance, then setting the lead compensator to cancel the dominant pitch pole, and finally tuning the glide slope controller to enforce glide slope command tracking. The airspeed control is tuned separately from the glide slope. First, we construct the lead compensator to cancel the slow engine lag pole and place it further in the left half plane. Second, we tune the proportional control loop to obtain an adequate rise time. Third, we tune the integral control loop for steady state tracking. We'll look at landing at the start of the glide slope. We assume landing is accomplished with an instrument landing system that begins to guide the aircraft at 3,000 feet above the runway. We trim the aircraft at 250 feet per second with a glide path angle of minus 3 degrees to match the commanded glide slope angle. To trim our aircraft to these conditions, it requires 0.88 degrees angle of attack, pitched down 2.1 degrees, with 27% thrust and elevator trailing edge up 16 degrees. The linearized system is then obtained about this trim condition. And the pole zero plot of the linearized system shows that the short period does have significant damping with a natural frequency of 1.02 radians per second or 0.16 hertz. The fugoid is non-conventional as a pure real pair with one unstable pole. The instability is not a major concern though, as it is very slow with a time to double of over 42 seconds. This unstable fugoid will be corrected with feedback control. It's time to tune. We start with the glide slope inner rate loop. As the pitch rate gain becomes more negative, we observe increasing damping of the short period. The pitch angle pole does not move as the pitch air proportional gain is zero. We select a pitch rate gain of minus 176, which just critically damps the short period. Pitch air loop. Holding the pitch rate gain at minus 176, we vary the pitch air proportional gain. As the pitch angle air gain becomes more negative, the pitch tracking pole at the origin moves leftward while the short period becomes less damped. The fast short period affects the step early on. As time increases, the short period decays and the pitch tracking pole dominates. This leads to the fast then slow rate of tracking in an apparent bend in the step response curve. We select a proportional air gain of minus 200 based on a 0.7 damping ratio. We correct for the bend in the step response curve with the lead compensator. The lead compensator is placed at the input to the closed loop system. In effect, it cancels the slow pitch pole and replaces it with a faster one of our choice. This allows us to get around the plant open loop zero, which otherwise attracts the closed loop pitch pole, limiting pitch tracking response. Without the compensator, and with it, now a much more desirable step response with tighter steady state tracking.
glide slope proportional loop. In the proportional loop, we notice a dependence on R, range to the transmitter. What is the effect of decreasing R? This will be explored, but for now, we select a midpoint range for initial tuning. At the start of a three degree glide path, range to the transmitter is 57,000 feet. Assuming we transition to the flare path at 50 feet, range is just under 1,000 feet. So we first attempt a single set of glide slope controller gains in between these two altitudes. This is at approximately 28,000 feet of range. As the proportional gain in the glide slope loop becomes more negative, we observe the normal glide slope distance pole move leftward off the origin. This is good because it indicates that the distance dynamics are stable so that the aircraft will come to the glide slope. But if the proportional gain becomes too large, the distance pole becomes part of a complex pair so that the aircraft will oscillate around the commanded glide slope. You can see this oscillation in the time domain linear simulation where a three degree change to the glide slope was commanded. Achieved glide slope angle improves, which means that the distance to the glide slope should be improving. But as we crank that proportional gain, the response is increasingly underdamped. A potentially good balance is at a gain of minus 40. Observe the time domain response for the gain of minus 40 to the three degree glide slope command. The elevator change is small, about two degrees or less. The short period and pitch dynamics have about 10 seconds of transient before regulating to the new equilibrium. Distance to the glide slope comes to equilibrium around 40 feet, which causes the integral error of the glide slope to monotonically increase. This is expected since there's no integral control, which would respond to the integral glide slope error increasing. Let's introduce this integral loop now. We now look at the integral loop in detail. Here's where we start. Now, decreasing integral air gain, we see a clear trade-off. The glide slope integrator indeed moves leftward, which will work to eliminate steady state glide slope air. However, simultaneously, the normal distance D and the compensator pole move rightward, decreasing stability, progressively losing damping. The movement of the compensator pole shows clear interaction between the glide slope loop and the closed loop pitch dynamics. This coupling increases the control tuning challenge. Here is the effect in the time domain again for the three degree change to the glide slope angle command. Note the normal distance D. We observe regulation. Also, the integral air glide slope comes to a constant value, indicating essentially minimal glide slope air being added to the integral as time increases. In the pitch dynamics, we observe increasing oscillation, but the effect is slight for this range of integral air gain. An integral air gain of minus four puts the glide slope integrator between the complex pair so that they are the same speed. One additional note, there's a zero pole hanging out on the origin. This is in the closed loop pitch dynamics. It's an unused pitch air integral pole, part of the pitch control system. Its gain is set to zero and it's not used in this analysis. This can be ignored as it does not affect the simulation. Here's the tune result for the three degree glide slope command. The transients occur between 5 and 20 seconds, indicating an approximately 15 second 
transient period to track the three degree change. The full glide slope response is not ideal. It is a compromise between multiple tuning objectives and control system interactions. What happens as range decreases? We'll look at the closed loop poles for the glide slope system for decreasing R. Here's range decreasing from the start of the glide slope command at approximately 57,000 feet away to the transition to the flare path at just 1,000 feet from the transmitter. What a remarkable change in closed loop behavior. Clearly, the closed loop glide slope control system becomes less stable toward instability as the aircraft closes in on the runway. We observe the buildup of oscillation as all signals diverge in the time domain. A few remarks on range. Range is a parameter in the closed loop glide slope controller. As range decreases, closed loop stability decreases because the smaller range amplifies the glide slope air. Only over short ranges will a single set of gains apparently provide satisfactory performance. Over longer ranges, like that considered here, glide slope coupler gains must decrease with range. This suggests a formula that could relate the gain to the range or gain scheduling or adaptive control for successful automatic landing systems. Now let's look at the airspeed loop, starting with the lead compensator. One way to view the compensator is to anticipate the slow five second engine response and cancel that pole in the engine with something much faster. Here, the lead compensator is selected for 10 times faster than the engine lag. Airspeed proportional loop. This is a pole zero plot for the full four state longitudinal system showing the open loop poles in white circles. The compensator zero with a green circle near the origin. The open loop short period pair in the blue X's, look how close they are to a complex zero pair. The open loop fugoid in the pink stars. And the closed loop system with zero gain, but the lead compensator in the loop. As the proportional gain increases, the compensator and airspeed poles form a complex pair with decreasing damping. We select a gain of 0.6. Integral loop. As the integral gain increases, some interesting things happen which we won't explore in detail. We select an integral air gain of 0.08, which shows reasonable damping in the real imaginary plane. In the time domain, the closed loop step response looks good. Note the unstable pitch pole. Recall it's 40 second plus time to double. This is controlled with the glide slope loop, so it's not a concern here. Okay, we've got both loops tuned. We now show how to create the complete closed loop system. We bring together individual components from the previous sections into a single system. First, we formulate a combined airspeed and pitch angle controller. We take that controller and close the loop between it and the airspeed dynamics. We then take that closed loop system and close the loop with it and the glide slope controller. This leads to the diagram shown below. We start with the combined airspeed and pitch controller. Here's the pitch angle controller with the lead compensator. 
Here's the airspeed controller with its lead compensator. Combined, we have a two command input, two control output control system with three feedback channels, theta, Q, and VT. This block represents their decoupled combination with airspeed and pitch angle command input and throttle and elevator command output. We now close the loop with the aircraft. This aircraft plant is comprised of actuation systems, elevator, throttle, engine, in series with the rigid body dynamics. Closing the loop with the combined controller gives this architecture, which can be condensed into a two input, two output closed loop aircraft system. We can now close the loop with the glide slope controller. Our closed loop aircraft with the glide slope measurement model becomes a new plant for the glide slope controller. As a single plant, we now close the loop with the glide slope coupler and the pitch command input channel. Now we have the full closed loop glide slope airspeed control system. Two inputs, airspeed command, glide slope command. Two outputs, airspeed achieved, glide slope achieved. We now simulate the glide slope and airspeed control system. Our simulation is based on the previously defined trim state. Our objective is to assess tracking response. We start on the glide path at a trimmed condition at 28,000 feet of range. At five seconds, a one degree change to the glide path is commanded with a reduced airspeed of 240 feet per second. So the aircraft must descend 490 feet onto the commanded glide path. First, we'll examine just the closed loop aircraft response where there's no glide slope coupling. We observe excellent tracking. The small steady state air and pitch is because pitch only has proportional control. We now look at glide slope and airspeed tracking according to our previous problem statement. We observe significant overshoot in the airspeed, upwards of 20%, but the tracking objectives are achieved. Let's review all states in the simulation, which are absolute, having the trimmed conditions added to the appropriate signals. The throttle response and input to the engine exceeds 100%, so the airspeed gains will need to be reduced. The pitch angle follows the command, though there is about a one degree bias error. Pitch rate regulates to zero, indicating the controller is working successfully. The distance to the glide slope shows deviation due to commanded glide slope change, and it's regulated after about 30 seconds. The elevator is well within its limits, and it doesn't seem to require excessive rate. The airspeed tracks its command, but the overshoot indicates the PI airspeed gains may be too large. The airspeed integral error comes to a non-zero equilibrium as expected. And the same holds for the integral glide slope error, both constant, non-zero, integral errors indicating asymptotic tracking. Given this is the first time we're seeing this system that was achieved with separately tuned loops, it's not bad. We'll do one round of retuning. The updated gains are on the right. We reduce the airspeed gains to bring the throttle and engine within limits. We change the airspeed lead compensator pole to help with transients. 
we also increased damping in the pitch loop. And finally, we increased the glide slope loop gains by 20%. The result is slightly lower performance, but with improved transients while not exceeding engine limits. The downside, airspeed overshoot has increased, not due to large airspeed PI gains, but being exacerbated, the overshoot, by the increased glide slope gains. With further tuning, we could help find an even better compromise. The signals make things seem very dynamic, but visualizing the aircraft gives a different impression. We observe gradual change in the elevator and the glide slope as the command goes from minus 3 degrees 250 feet per second to minus 2 degrees 240 feet per second. Future work will see this controller implemented in the full nonlinear simulation with flare path control. Access this lesson and more at learngnc.com. And a sincere thank you to my Patreon subscribers who gain access to all the codes in this analysis, lesson previews, and video code tutorials. Thank you very much.